everybody, Doc Legrand here, and today we are going to be talking about what I've done over this past like year, uh, well, over the past 10 years, really, um, because I've done like over 11,000 different lab tests on ADC patients. And these are, I'm going to share the lessons I've learned to really help you eliminate the ADC symptoms you're experiencing and making sure that this is something that going, especially into 2026, that you have a game plan of what you can do to finally live with your ADHD and excel with your ADHD. And so one of the biggest aha moments for me, especially for my own ADHD, it really came down to uh, discovering the root causes of uh, my own symptoms and working with other functional medicine doctors that understood this concept. And that's what led me on my path to becoming a functional medicine doctor as well and helping other people with ADHD. And so some of the biggest aha things that I have discovered over the years running all these different lab tests on adults with ADHD is first off, like we always think that like dopamine is the main culprit when it comes to ADHD, but it actually isn't the number one. Um, it's a big contributing factor, but I'll tell you, it's not number one. In fact, serotonin, when we test for this, we see that about 66% of the people that we test tends to be deficient in serotonin, just like this patient right here. And what does it have to do with ADHD? A lot of people think it has to do with just depression, but people with ADHD also deal with depression, but it also impacts your motivation, your drive, your mood, your sleep, all sorts of things. And so it's really critical to be looking at this to making sure that this is not an issue. Okay. Um, if you have questions, also go ahead and put those in chat. I'm going to make sure to answer any questions that you do have on ADHD around this topic. Uh, so do please drop that in the chat and also let me know that you can hear me and see me fine. Or if you can't, uh, let me know in the chat. Next thing is there's also um, the opposite. It's what we call a serotonin syndrome. And so with serotonin syndrome, this definitely can cause agitation, irritation. It can cause things such as like um, hallucination sometimes. Uh, and this can be a big detriment to a lot of people with ADHD, when, especially if you're using medications. And sometimes we'll see this when people are thinking on like antidepressants along with their ADHD medication, and it can elevate it. And we typically will see this roughly about like 20 to maybe even up to like 25% of the people that we do test will have elevated serotonin levels. So it's a big component and something that definitely needs to be addressed and making sure that this isn't a contributing factor to your ADHD. Okay. The other thing here too, is that on top of it, um, can, can you guys in the chat, just let me know if you can hear me and see me because we're using new technology and I just need to make sure, can you hear me? Uh, cause I have not seen anybody drop anything in the chat. So I need to just make sure that this is working. Um, we're going on because we're using some new technology and sometimes using new technology it doesn't always sync up like you want to okay good <laughs> thanks someone thank you so much uh my light to, uh, uh fine thank you for at least replying back there's quite a bit of you guys on here i just need to make sure this is working okay thank you thank you thank you oh that was sure because i'm all like is the live stream got working can you not hear me all right le now let's continue on <laughs> I just need to make that make sure that you guys can hear me. Um, so the next thing here is uh, GABA. GABA is one that I don't hear people talk about, uh, especially when it comes to related to ADHD, but it's a huge contributing factor, especially from what we've uh, tested from our data, because GABA itself um, deals with our anxiety. So when it's low, we have a very hard time managing ADHD, uh, sorry, managing our anxiety with our ADHD. And so it makes a big difference. Uh, and so when we've tested this, we've actually seen about 38% of the people that we test tends to be low in GABA. Big amount. Uh, and it's something that usually needs to be addressed. And typically, we're going to use more anxiolytic types of herbs and supplementation to lower this, especially if we're not using things like medication to help with that. Now, the other thing can happen is also the opposite. When it's the opposite, it can also cause more anxiety, agitation, irritation. Uh, and with this, typically, we will see about 28% other people that we test, I uh, will have elevated GABA levels. Okay. Another one um, that is not talked about, but it is important when it comes to all these different neurotransmitters we just talked about, even dopamine. So serotonin, GABA, dopamine, 
all these um, rely a lot on things like histamine, which is like a driver that helps like build and modulate neurotransmitters. Taurine is a big one for helping making GABA. And we see both of these tends to be also low. When it comes to histamine levels, we, let me see here, just make sure I got my numbers right. Yeah, so 64% of the people that we test, we will see histamine levels being low. So big amount. And usually what we'll do is you will use things like L-histidine to help improve histamine levels. Uh, taurine, uh, the percentage we see usually with taurine, uh, make sure I got that number right. Yes, yeah, 32%. 32% of the people that we tested over these past 10 years uh, have low taurine levels. So that's like, you know, one third of you guys or one fourth of you guys. Uh, well, actually about one third. Yeah, one third of you guys uh, typically would need something like this, that you tend to be deficient. Where it comes to histine, more than half of you probably have some histamine issues. The other one, um, before we even get to dopamine, there is an excitatory neurotransmitter known as phenylethylamine. You guys probably maybe heard me talk about this and stress about this because 91% of the people we we're testing, like it used to be like 90%, and over this past year, we're seeing it even more so, like it's increasing. Uh, that this tends to be low. Now, why this is important is because it's an excitatory neurotransmitter that also impacts your motivation. It helps improve motivation. It helps improve uh, focus and memory. Like that's why it's so vital. Okay. Tyrosine, on the other hand, is what helps make dopamine. So sometimes that's actually the problem why your dopamine levels are low. So we want to make sure we're addressing that. And about I think it's uh double check here. Yep. So it's 52% of the people that you test for is low in tyrosine levels. Okay. Whereas 91% is phenylethylamine. So two very, very vital ones that should be looked at even more so than dopamine. Okay. Now, a few other ones. These are the breakdown of dopamine but also are produced in the adrenals too on its own. And so what we test when we're looking at these, norepinephrine and both an epinephrine also manage our stress and can impact your focus, motivation, drive. When it comes to norepinephrine, uh, we see about 60% of the people that we test is deficient in that. When it comes to epinephrine, we see 98, yes, 98% of the people that we test tend to have an issue. So a lot of people with ADHD tend to have, this is the biggest one, that pretty much majority of you guys, if you have ADC, probably have low epinephrine levels and needs to be addressed. Now, dopamine. I didn't forget about dopamine. It's still important. It's still a contributing factor, but it's not as big as you think. About 48% of the people that we do test now, even like this year, it's kind of gone down a little bit. It used to be about around 50. Now we're seeing about 48% of the people that we do test is low in dopamine. It's still about half of you guys. Um, but there was all those other things that you probably didn't know about. Let me know in the chat if you didn't know about that before, because I'm curious if this is an aha moment for you, if you're realizing, well, you know, there's, I didn't realize there's other things other than just dopamine to be looking at. But dopamine definitely can contribute to your ADC for sure. But everywhere online, the videos, YouTube videos, like everyone just talks about dopamine. But it's only 48% of the problem from, from my testing, you know, from what we've done over these past 10 years and testing people. So there's also the opposite. No one talks about, I don't hear people talk about elevated dopamine, but it does happen. In fact, what we see is about roughly about 10 to 12% of the people that we test will have elevated dopamine levels. And usually this happens when you're put on a stimulant medication and it's too much. And what the symptoms come from this is being agitated, irritated. So if you're like been on your medication and you're feeling agitated, irritated, it's possible your dopamine levels are too high and you need to talk to your prescribing doctor to maybe adjust it, lower it. Don't do it on your own. For sure, you need to be talking to a prescribing doctor. That's what they're trained for um, to understand that maybe there needs to be some adjustments in, in your dosages or the type of medication that you're taking. Okay. Now, some other big ones, big ahas for me was certain key vitamins that help with neurotransmitters. So vitamin B6, it's a huge one. In fact, here, let's just go back to dopamine. If you see right here, P5P, that is the activated form of vitamin B6. You can see here, it's responsible for helping making every step of this process that we've just been talking about. So, 
when it comes to vitamin B6, you better believe that it's something you probably should address because about 60% of the people that we do test is deficient in vitamin B6. When it comes to uh, vitamin B12, this has to do more with energy, but I, I find that, that this one tends to be about 40% roughly uh, deficient. And then vitamin B3, uh, which is another big one, uh, we see about also about 38% that we test tends to be deficient in this. And this also helps build and modulate certain ear transmitters, okay? Now, zinc is also one that is very common to see people with ADHD uh, deficient in this. Um, it's about 29% of the people that we test. Now, why is this important? Because um, zinc is also responsible for a lot of the different pathways like serotonin, dopamine, GABA, to help build and modulate these different ear transmitters, okay? So we don't wanna make sure we're missing out on some of these key vitamins and minerals. Uh, vitamin D3. Um, most people like tends to be at least like about 50% of the population tends to be deficient in um, ADC. But those who are significantly deficient, that's usually what I'm looking at uh, for these numbers, especially with people with ADHD, is about 29% of the people. That is like uh, usually severely deficient. And that not only is that has to do a lot with your impact, your mood and motivation drive, but also impacts also the different neurotransmitter pathways. Another one I really want to talk about and stress so much is this is another huge one is cortisol. So when people, when you ever read about cortisol or hear about it, maybe from a health guru, they always talk about like elevated cortisol is bad. It's what gains weight and all this stuff. Yes, people can have elevated cortisol. But people with ADHD, from my experience, especially adults, they tend to run to a burnout state. They're burnt out. So they actually tend to have lower cortisol throughout the day because we need cortisol to get up and function, to have motivation, drive. And 92% of the people that we test is low in cortisol. Now, sometimes we'll see it low and high, right? So... Um, usually where we'll see some spikes or elevated cortisol, uh, about 22% of the people that we test will have either all high cortisol or at least low and high, 22% um, will see spike. And sometimes we see it really spiked. And this is not only impacting stress and your energy, but it also impacts sleep too, which sabotages your health for sure, sabotages you to function throughout the day. So I get this a lot of information. Let me know in the chat what has been the most um, beneficial for you. What has been the most eye-opening for you of me discovering and telling you these different things that we've discovered? What has been the biggest discovery for you that you didn't know about? I'm just curious. In the chat, let me know. Because would uh, I'm just curious, Like, would you like me to order these labs for you? Because that's what we do with our patients, uh, to really identify the root causes to your EDD, ADHD symptoms, to understand what is causing the lack of motivation, the drive, the focus, the uh, the overwhelm and the stress, the burnout. What is contributing to that? It's going to be certain different body chemistry balances that are contributing to that. So if you'd like me to order these for you, I'd love to help you out. Basically, the first step, obviously, just like anytime you go see a doctor, uh, we have to have first appointment. Um, and so this is just uh, my ADC, you book an ADC focused diagnostic assessment with me where I can go over your medical history and dive deep and understand the ins and outs of your challenges uh, with your EDC and then what labs we need to put together. So once I've gone over your medical history, met with you, then I can put a roadmap of what labs to implement and then a game plan to help you actually eliminate your EDC symptoms and thrive with your EDC versus making it uh, where it becomes a burden to your life. So if you'd like to do that, all you gotta do is just click on the link in the description below. Love to help you out. Thank you guys so much for attending. I'll see you guys on the next live stream. Thanks. Bye.